so in this slide we are going to discuss why php why we have to use php not other programming language why php is it successful as compared to other language so the first one is php runs on various platforms which means that php runs on basically every platform either your system or your laptop or your computer contains windows it has linux it has unix mac operating system which means that if your system or your computer have any operating system in that form in that situation php is able to run there is no restriction or there are no limitation that php is suitable only on few platform php is suitable on every operating system either it is windows linux or mac operating system or unix if you have any operating system then you are able to run php in your system okay the next one is php is compatible with almost all server used today this is that php is compatible with almost every server there are lots of server are available the first the examples are apache iis these are the example of server this is that php is compatible with almost all type of server that's why it is popular as compared to other languages as compared to java as compared to .NET, PHP is popular. After that, the next thing is, PHP supports a wide range of databases, which means that PHP allows you to, you, allows you to that you can use various or different types of databases. That's why it is popular. After that, the next thing is, PHP is free. This is one of the main advantages of PHP is that it is free. There is no cost of there is no cost of usage of PHP. PHP. You just have to download it from the Google and install it in your system, and after that you are able to run the PHP and able to become a developer. After that, the next thing is download it from the official PHP source www.php.net. What it means? It means that you are going to download the PHP from the official PHP resource. The website, this is the website www.php.net. You have to go to the Google and write this website www.php.net. And after that, you have to choose the suitable version or the version which is used today or now these days. And you are going to download it. And after that, you have to install it in your system. So this is how you can download the PHP in your system. PHP is easy to learn and runs efficiently on the server side. So this is one of the main advantages that you can easy learn, you can learn easily PHP. There are not different or difficult syntax of the PHP. You just there are very simple syntax of PHP are available. You just have to use it, and with the help of that syntax, you are able to develop any website after that run efficiently on the server side so this is one of the main thing that php is not a client side programming language it is a server side programming language if you have write anything on with the help of php then it is run on the server side not on the client side php basically follows server side programming language architecture after that the next thing is to start using PHP, you can find a web host with PHP and MySQL support. So PHP is basically is used for your programming language and MySQL you are going to use for the database storage or the data you want to store in the form of table. After that, the next thing is install a web server on your own PC and then install PHP and MySQL. He says that you have to install a web server on your system after that you are able to install php and mysql in your system the next thing is set up php on your own pc so these are the steps or these are the simple instructions which you have followed to set up php in your system so the first one is however if if your server does not support php you must he says that if your server or web server does not support your PHP, 
then you have to follow these steps. The first one is install a web server. You have to install a web server. So this is one of the first or main or important requirement for the PHP. If you want that your system or you want to run PHP, then the first thing is you have to install a web server because PHP is a server side scripting language. So web server is very important. Without web server, PHP is not able to execute or not able to run. So after the installation of web server, the next thing is you have to install PHP. The first step is you have to install web server. And the next step is, second step is you have to install PHP in your system. The next thing is install a database such as MySQL. After installing web server, and PHP, the last thing is you have to install a database. The database is your own choice. Either you can use SQL, either you can choose MySQL, Oracle. It is up to you that which type of database you have to use. So these are the three steps that is used to install or set up a PHP in your own system. The first one is you have to install web server. Second, you have, after the installation of web server, you have to install PHP. And the last one is install a database such as MySQL or SQL or any kind of database which you have used. So this is the instructions which you have to follow using or set up PHP in your system. After that, the last thing is the official PHP website, php.net has installation instruction for PHP. He says that if you don't know or if you have no idea about the instruction or which instruction you have to follow for installation of PHP, then you have to go to the official website of the PHP, which is php.net. And at the at there, you have find the instruction. So there's a brief instruction which they have provided, and you have to use or follow these instructions to install PHP in your system. So this is the website php.net slash manual slash en slash install dot php. So you have to go on the Google and write this website. Then you are able to find the instruction for installation of PHP. So these are the basic steps which you have used to install PHP in your system. Okay, so the next thing is development environment. Basically, previously I told you that PHP support every operating system. It's supposed different types of operating system. Either it is Windows, Linux, Mac, or Unix. You can choose or you can you can run PHP on every operating system. Either it is Windows, Linux, or Mac. It is up to you or it is your choice that you can which type of software or which type of operating system you have used. After that, the next thing is web server. XAMPP, WAMP, MAMP. So these are the web servers which you can use for the PHP program run. So these are the web servers. XAMPP, WAMP, MAMP. XAMPP, Apache plus MariaDB plus PHP plus Perl. So this is the XAMPP server contains Apache, MariaDB, PHP, and Perl. After that, the next thing is editor IDE, Notepad. There is a need of Notepad, Notepad++, NetBean, Brackets, Eclipse, etc. So these are the software, or you can say that these are the editor or platform which you can use to write your PHP programs. The first one is Notepad. Second one is Notepad++, third one is NetBeans, fourth one is Bracket, and the last one is Eclipse, etc. These are the various software which is used for write the PHP program. The next thing is Web Browser. Web Browser, basically you can choose any web browser, Chrome, Google Chrome, Mozilla, Firefox, 
internet explorer so these are the basic example of the web server which you can use for your php program so this is the environment which you have to set for your php program the first one is you have to install operating system or any type of operating system which your system has either it is windows windows 10 windows 8 windows 7 then you are able to install web server after that the next thing is you have to install web server you can choose web server of your own choice either it is xamp vamp mamp etc it's on you that which type of web server you have used the next thing is editor ide editor ide which means that here you where you are going to write your php code you can write it in the notepad or in the notepad plus plus or netbean brackets or eclipse these are the various software which are used to write the php code and the last one is web browser so there are lots of web browser are available either it is google chrome mozilla firefox or internet explorer with the help of that web browser you are able to run your php program so this is all about environment of the php next thing is what does php code look like so the first one is a php script can be placed anywhere in the document he says that the php code or php script can be placed anywhere in the document you can write php code or php php script anywhere at any place in the document there is no restriction after that the next thing is structurally similar to c c++ it says that the structure of php code is similar to c and c++ okay the next thing is supports procedural and object oriented paradigm to some degree this is that php support various types of procedural paradigm and object oriented paradigm which means that you are able to create classes you are able to create object in your php file after that the next thing is all php statements end with a semicolon like c and c++ in the c and c++ every statement end with the semicolon same are in the case of php if you want to end the statement or you want that your statement is going to be end then you have to use a semicolon without semicolon your php statement will not be completed and if it is not completed and you are going to run it then it will show you an error so you have to use a semicolon at the last of the php statement after that the next thing is each php script must be enclosed in the reserved php tag this is that each php script must be enclosed in the res reserved php tag so this is the structure of basic php tag so the first one is less than sign after that question mark here you have to write php so here you have write your statement or program which you want to execute after that the last thing is question mark and the greater than sign so this is the syntax of php program if you want to write simple program after that the next thing is syntax a php script can be placed anywhere in the document in previous slide i told you that the php script you can write anywhere in your document after that a php script start with less than question mark php and ends with question mark greater than semicolon because in previous slide i told you that colon that you have to use tags so the first one is you have to start your php with the less than question mark php and end with the question mark greater than after that this is the syntax here if you want to write any php code then you have to write less than question mark php this is the first thing which you have to use before writing the php code and in the next line here php code goes here any type of code for example if you want to write addition program if you want to write subtraction program or you want to multiply two or three numbers 
so here the code is written here this is the syntax it comes similar and this is comes similar and here the code the main code either it is run execute or multiply two number add two number here the code comes so this is the code section and the last this is and at last the question mark and greater than sign will become so this is the basic syntax of your php code after that the next thing is you have to save your php file with the dot php extension it is must required the default file extension for php files is php this is a default extension which is by default you have no need to change it so the default extension for php file is dot php after that the last thing is a php file normally contains html tags and some php scripting code as previously i told you that you can embed your php code with the html files so this is as usual that your php file normal contain html tag which means that your php file contains various kinds of html tags like had the html body you can use different kind of tags in your html or in your php code and some scripting code so this is all about the syntax of php so you have proper knowledge about the basic syntax of php if you want to become an master in the php so this is a sample code a small sample code of the php program so here the first one is document type html after that the next thing is because you know that php code is the mixture of html and php script so here these are the tag the first one is html after that the next next tag is body tag here h1 my first php page and here h1 heading 1 is closed after that here the php will be come you have write less than question mark php and here echo echo basically used for if you want to display anything on the screen like c contains print tab java contains system dot out dot print ln like here echo contains echo is used for display the content on the screen it basically act like print tab or system dot out dot print ln okay echo is basically used for display the content on the screen so if one if anyone ask you that why echo is used so you can say that echo is basically used for display the content on the screen so here we are going to write anything of your own choice here i write that hello world so after that the last thing is question mark and greater than sign here the syntax is start here the statement is closed or you can say that here the statement is start and here the statement is closed so this is all about the syntax of html code or php code here last we are going to close our body tag or tags which are open so body tag is open and here we are going to close and here html tag we are going to close in html you know that the tags which you are going to open you have to close it so this is all about your sample small sample code of php okay so this is a basic introduction of php that how you can install your install php in your system what are the sample code or basic program of php after that the next thing is how you can set environment in environment in your system for run the php code so this is all about php so thank you thank you so much